Okay. So uh, this is the last part, uh, which uh, maybe it's <laughs> the less the less prepared because it has to do with the things that we are doing just now. Actually, we speak about the chaos and synchronization, very, very little about control on several automata or discrete systems. And I thought, actually, I shall show that, I hope, that uh, synchronization is uh, something that is uh, related to observability of, uh, of the systems. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the idea is uh, to understand uh, the origin of unpredictability in uh, extended systems which are not uh, causic in the usual sense. I mean, that uh, a lot of, uh, um, for instance, biological systems, say cells and so on, they live uh, in a very noisy environment, you know, thermal noise, the things that happen uh, outside. So actually, they are not really chaotic in the sense that we have seen for uh, deterministic systems. Because the chaos that we have defined for the deterministic system means sensitivity, sensitivity to infinitesimal perturbations. And clearly, a, a living system cannot be so sensitive to anything. Otherwise, clearly, it is really unpredictable. But still, uh, for instance, our neurons, they have to be quite sensitive to a certain, to say, noises or perturbation of a certain size. Mm -hmm. So, should be insensitive to the, say, random variation of uh, normal uh, life. But clearly, you have to detect if there is a lion <laughs> or, a, no, or a danger. Maybe uh, sensitive to measurable uh, perturbations. Yes, perturbation. So, you react the same, uh, if I ask you what's your name, you say the same, even if you are here, if you are uh, on a bus, uh, if you are, say, watching the TV. So, it is insane, their reaction is insensitive of uh, what happens around you in general. But here yeah, you are a lot of sensitive to specific uh, perturbation because uh, if you see a danger, you know. You jump uh, and you react uh, quickly. So clearly, it is a, a sens sensibilization or uh, unpredictability. We are unpredictable in the long, uh, say, uh, in the long run, but we are quite predictable in the short run range. And uh, so let's uh, revise uh, what is uh, low-dimensional chaos, uh, what uh, has been studied up to now. So, I mean, you have uh, two replicas, uh, X and uh, Y. Mm -hmm. You have a distance, uh, and this distance uh, is increases exponentially during time. This is the, the idea of chaos. Now, you can also watch chaos from the opposite point of view. Instead of overlooking how do trajectories diverge, you should ask uh, how much should they push one trajectory towards another in order to make them stay close or, or identical. So, I mean, I have uh, one autonomous system and another one uh, equal. which... Uh, huh? Equal. Dx plus one is function of x at the y, y. y here. Equal to one minus so that's equal. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, y t plus 1 equal to, uh, with the uh, set of parameters p, takes the value of its own or the value from here. So clearly, if p equals 0, it is uh, completely independent of x. Is, if p is equal to 1, clearly this is equal to this because uh, this part is equal to this one. Mm. So, there is a critical value of P for which the two trajectories stay close. Hmm? Then you define the distance as usual. Here, something will go to yeah. the, this presentation. <laughs> Here, something will happen. Okay. And, uh, now, and uh, you may compute the evolution of the distance. 
and here I'm missing it is uh, some absolute value. So if you if you take uh, this minus this, uh, here this factorizes, so you can put into evidence uh, one minus p here. You have the difference, you develop the difference for small distances, and you end up with this one with the two absolute values. I, will, I shall correct the slides. Eh? And so this is uh, essentially the evolution of the distance. Eh? Mm. And you see that uh, this, if, if the system is chaotic, uh, this gives something uh, which uh, is greater than one. So it tends to increase the distance. Uh, but this is less than one. So it shrinks. Mm. And so if you look for the solution delta going to zero, the critical value is uh, for a critical value of p, which is related to the Lyapunov exponent of the map. So, essentially, you can measure the Lyapunov exponent either letting two trajectories diverge and measuring the distance, or measuring how much should they push one trajectory towards the other in order to have them polish. Which maybe sometimes is more easy to implement in experimental system no, rather than uh, uh, the other. And uh, uh, actually, anticipating uh, the end, I would like to say that, okay, let's suppose now that this system is my experimental system. And this is what uh, I would like to simulate uh, on the computer. Hmm? I suppose that I know the fundamental law of evolution of the experimental system. But uh, I don't know the exact state, and uh, I've sh we have sh seen in the Lorentz model that even a small uh, difference uh, can be amplified by the dynamics. Then I say, okay, I can take, I can measure something on my X system and put it into my experiment, uh, simulated system, and if I take enough information from here, I finally have the distance of the two going to zero. So one is synchronized to the other. And so I can use the Y system to measure something that I cannot measure directly on the experimental system. But in order to do that, I have to apply this to spatially extended systems. Now, spatially extended systems are a bad beast. <laughs> because, uh, uh, so, for instance, uh, I consider, say, a chain of couple oscillators or uh, something like this. Mm? Then uh, you may have, uh, say, these, uh, in, this kind of, in this case, they are bolts, they can oscillate, and then they can also propagate the oscillation to neighboring uh, mm -hmm. systems. But actually, the problem is that uh, if I make a and if, if I take two systems and I perform a variation of one with respect to the other, I may have amplification in, this, in the direction of the oscillation. So suppose here I have the same system as before, but now coupled with other systems mm -hmm. in the spatial sense. So the problem is that I don't, in the Yapun of analysis, I don't see the propagation because propagation is at most linear. No? Because generally I have here diffusion and diffusion is not chaotic. So I only essentially see the expansion, the, the chaotic behavior in the single variable, and I'm, I'm not uh, uh, capturing uh, what happens. Uh, in, during propagation. Essentially, what happens is that, uh, let's, uh, let's say, uh, let me show what happens, uh, but before I have to talk about the Yarnall spectrum, we already met this. Uh, clearly, for the spatially extended system, uh, I have a lot of uh, eigenvectors, uh, one for each component of my system. Now, the system is n-dimensional, so I have n different Lyapunov exponents. So when I'm speaking about the Lyapunov spectrum, uh, which gives the contraction of volumes in the phase space, and for instance, uh, 
for a system like this, my Jacobian is a three-diagonal matrix, no, as before. Well, now this component, before we have seen this for constant matrices, now this component depends on the trajectory, so I have to consider the product of these Jacobians. But in general, I have a spectrum with the largest eigenvalue, the second one, and the third, and so on and so on. And uh, in general, as you know, I speak of chaos when there is at least the one Lyapunov exponent greater than zero. Hmm? We have seen for the Lorentz system, which was three dimensional, we had uh, one no, big uh, Lyapunov, one positive Lyapunov exponent, and other zero or less than zero. In general, if there is at least one Lyapunov exponent greater than zero, uh, I have uh, uh, this expansion. This is a typical spectrum of uh, an extended system. It can be, uh, can be here we have, I have just one positive Lyapunov exponent, but I can have a few of them positive, and generally I have a lot of them negative. Uh, because, uh, like in the, in the Lorentz system, in general I have. Uh, a small dimensional attraction means that the, the phase space is quickly contracted toward, to the attractor, and then I have a positive Lyapunov exponent, having that inside the attractor I have divergence of trajectories. And uh, so I study coupled maps, so their maps, for instance, logistic maps, or Bernoulli maps, which are the simplest one because they have a constant. Uh, uh, derivative or tent map which has a derivative which is constant uh, in absolute value or logistic map. Okay, and you couple them with a, a um, diffusive coupling. I mean, if you perform the almost homogeneous expansion. You end up having the logistic map plus a Laplace. Hmm? Essentially, the, the simplest approximation is to just to put a diffusion uh, operator to the, no, the logistic map. Hmm? Okay, so for what you, in the, from the computational point of view, you take an array of coupled map lattices, you let them evolve by themselves one step. And then you mix a bit uh, <coughs> not the state of the system, and then you let them uh, evolve, and you mix them a bit, and so on. So you have uh, two parameters. Uh, one is the parameter of your map, as before, and the other is the coupling. Hmm? Now, what happens uh, is that uh, the causticity generally decreases uh, with the coupling. So if you have a coupled system, it is less chaotic than the uncoupled one. Because uh, the diffusion is like uh, a surface tension. It makes uh, the two maps, uh, two nearby maps, uh, are not so different because they are coupled by diffusion. So it, when, when there is no coupling, each map uh, in each site can take a, a, a random value. So it can be extremely disordered. But if you have diffusion, you don't have uh, so strong a variation. So they are forced to stay all very near one to the other. No? And so if you plot the largest Lyapunov exponent with respect to the coupling, you see that this is uh, the Lyapunov exponent, this is for the logistic, this is for the tent map. <coughs> this is the largest Lyapunov exponent here. Then, when you increase the coupling, it decreases. Really, then funny things may happen, but in general, you have uh, this decreasing uh, near epsilon coupling equal to zero. So, essentially, what is well known is that uh, a diffusive uh, reaction, diffusive system, uh, is less chaotic than the reaction system itself when diffusion is absent. Because diffusion 
is similar to a surface tension. So it means that it cannot become extremely rough your chain because a diffusion is like having a spring. Mm -hmm. Keeps this uh, staying uh, so smooth, so it cannot uh, diverge in, in every sense. Okay, but uh, uh, from the point of view of predictability or controlling, uh, actually an uncoupled system uh, is much easier to be controlled than an uncoupled uh, than a coupled one, because if you have an independent oscillator. You have just to control one after the other, and you have no problem. Why? If they are coupled, you have to control all together. Otherwise, you cannot just control one after the other. You control one and it starts synchronizing the other. All right. And I said, if you have, a <coughs> there is a, a nice uh, video that I don't know if I have here of Strogas again, where he shows uh, that uh, if you take uh, the metronomes, mm -hmm. those used for music. Mm -hmm. Clearly, if they are placed on a table which is stand, they oscillate out of phase. Mm -hmm. But if, if the table starts oscillating uh, by the action of the metronomes, they may synchronize because they are coupled. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, so, you think of as of something similar, but not with uh, metronomes which are essentially periodic systems, uh, but with chaotic systems. In chaotic systems it's the opposite, because <coughs> if they are chaotic but uh, everything uh, is uncoupled, you take, you take the first uh, and you control it, then you take the second and you control it, you take the third, and so very little effort you can control all your oscillators. But if they are coupled, uh, you synchronize the first, and when you pass the second, the first they synchronize because they still see inputs from neighboring oscillators. So I have to synchronize a lot of them together in order, or oh, control a lot of them together in order to have the whole system controlled. So the system is less chaotic, but harder to control. And so the Lyapunov of exponent tests nothing. But at least the maximum you have response uh, tells nothing about this. Now, <clears throat> let's think of using the pushing technique in order to measure the real chaoticity of the system, as I sh I've shown for one dimensional system before. No? I, I showed that I can measure the chaoticity either by measuring the level of exponent or by measuring the effort for ne necessary for pushing two replicas together. So let's try to use the pushing method with the extended systems. Hmm? And I can choose, uh, say, at least uh, two, uh, two different ways of pushing. Uniform, which means uh, pushing all your oscillators together. I mean, I have uh, a series of oscillators, another series of oscillators. I measure the, the state of all one system, and they push together all the others toward the first one. Exactly, so it is exactly the same that I did in one dimensional system. Or the, the opposite simulation is a pinching one. So I, I choose a, a, a small set and I completely synchronize the small set and I leave the other uncoupled, mm -hmm. uncoupled unsynchronized. Mm -hmm. And I hope that now the diffusion helps me synchronizing the rest. Hmm? Okay, so if you, if you use a uniform, uh, uniform uh, synchronization, you get exactly the same uh, as you got uh, in the previous case. <coughs> the effort uh, is proportional to the largest Lyapunov of exponent. So, uh, next. So, the exponent, the exponential of the largest level exponent. Which means that uh, <coughs> coupled systems uh, are easier to, to be controlled by uniform pushing than uncoupled one. No? Because they have less. Uh, uh, the level the, the exponent is uh, smaller. But uh, the problem is that. Uh, 
I have to act on all of them at the same time, in the same moment. So think of a spatial extended system. Say, I want to control uh, the chemical reaction uh, in, in a tank. I should uh, be able to act on all molecules of a whole system at the same time in order to perform this kind of act. So it is essentially impossible. <laughs> On the other hand, I can do this uh, relatively easy, in a relatively easier way, because I can choose some spot and force the concentration of my chemical react reactant in this spot to be the same as uh, the ones in the other tank. This can be done. Okay, no? so <clears throat> the idea is that I choose a fraction P of sites, and I synchronize them, or I let them evolve freely. Hmm? Now, let's consider what happens in a one-dimensional system. So suppose I have my, the chain, and these are the states, the, the sites, where I perform this kind of synchronization. Hmm? And this is time. Hmm? Now, what happens? It may happen that uh, I arrive to... Clearly, they are deterministic. So if uh, all three of them... So suppose they, I have nearest neighbor coupling. If all three of them are synchronized, they stay synchronized. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that these are the... Actually, these are the sites that I have not synchronized. So essentially it is a direct percolation system. If I have up to time, to large time, at least a path that is not synchronized, I may have the system not synchronized. Clearly, if I synchronize a, a lot of sites so that I don't have any path, the system is synchronized at, uh, synchronizes at all, no? Uh, completely. So I don't need the, to synchronize all sites in order to have perfect synchronization, I have to synchronize at least enough sites as in <coughs> the directed the perforation problem. Is this clear? Mm -hmm. So I don't need to pinch all sites to be sure to have the two systems synchronized. I only need to pinch enough sites in order to kill or path in which a divergence could spread. So, at least I have not to go to 100%, but it is sufficient to have, say, 70% of sites. But now I ask... It depends on <coughs> where this... Okay, yeah. mm. then I can use uh, an optimization technique and say, okay, I want to have the least uh, number of synchronized mm -hmm. techniques. This is for random... Uh, and choosing at, at random. And the number of uh, these sites given by P? Yes. But uh, I know that, uh, we have, I've seen in the other lesson, mm -hmm. that uh, there is a critical value of P for which there is no percolating path. It means that uh, any P greater than this for sure synchronizes my system. Yeah, then P must be greater than no. this. Now the problem, the, the question is, should I go up to this limit, yeah. or the system uh, will, yeah, will, will synchronize before? Mm -hmm. Hmm? And so, and uh, <coughs> uh, I can say, okay, I have a very very strong chaos. If I need to arrive just to this limit, but uh, I may have a less so weak chaos if I, I have synchronization before this limit. Mm -hmm. And in particular, if I use uh, <coughs> Bernoulli maps, which are the, the most chaotic system because it has constant derivative, uh, independent of how many networks I have and so on, this for sure no, is the, a very strong chaos. Why, for instance, uh, Logistic, uh, according to the way you may be, may synchronize also by themselves. Okay, so I studied uh, 
Okay, it's fine, we have the result. So, I, I did uh, two, two things. I generated the, the critical uh, cluster and uh, the invasion percolation that I have not, I had not time to explain last time is able to give me exactly the limit value, the, the, the cluster that percolates uh, at the critical value. So this is the <coughs> smallest uh, clusters that percolates uh, and that is generated by a random process. Okay, I can construct by hand uh, a path, uh, but this is not generated by a random <coughs> process. And then uh, I study what happens uh, on this cluster, and uh, I get the frontier, this is coupling, hmm? and this is the parameter of the system, and this is a frontier that gives a synchronization. Hmm? So how do I read this? Say, without uh, any coupling, I don't have any synchronization for any value of A, this diverges. No? But if I increase coupling, I may have synchronization uh, for a certain A, and remember that A is related to the Lyapunov of exponent. And so I see that here for Bernoulli or Ted Map, I have the synchronization for the uh, smallest uh, value of A, <coughs> mm -hmm. for epsilon equal ones uh, essentially. It means that uh, it is uh, the point where it is more difficult to synchronize the system uh, is not uh, with epsilon equal to zero. Actually, with epsilon equal to zero, uh, any for any value of A, I can synchronize the system. No, because. Uh, Suppose that it is not coupled. I, I choose at each time step one out of 1,000 sites and I synchronize it. But so I synchronize this and this stays synchronized forever. Mm -hmm. Then I synchronize another one and then another one. So I can go as low as I want. And at the end, every, every site is synchronized. They are, not, they are uncoupled, so they do not uh, mm -hmm. spread. Chaos stays there. No? Mm -hmm. So for epsilon, equal to zero, and for any chaotic system, I synchronize it without any problem. On the contrary, if epsilon is one third, I mean, they are democratic coupling, eh? they take one third from uh, the left, one third from the right, one third from uh, the previous value, it is the most uh, difficult uh, system to be synchronized. I have to lower the chaoticity no, to this value, because otherwise I'm not able to synchronize the system. Because uh, I pinch it uh, in some places and it, and it start bubbling and propagating and others. So I have to synchronize a, a lot of sites all together in order to keep the system uh, synchronized. So uh, the message is the, <coughs> the point where this procedure shows that the, the system is actually more unpredictable, more difficult to be controlled, or to be synchronized in this sense, is where the coupling is essentially uniform. You know? So if it is uh, more towards uh, keeping the same value as the, pre as a, the previous map, or uh, more oriented in taking the value of the two other neighbors, uh, it, it is essentially easier to synchronize. I can synchronize up to a causticity much higher than this. This is the idea. So, so uh, if the system is a uh, weak coupled, I can essentially synchronize less sites because uh, then I can, um, there is a le less influence from neighbors that brings uh, my, my system out of synchronicity. <coughs> Okay, this is for uh, synchronizing chaotic system, but now let's go to the problem of synchronizing a non-chaotic system. <coughs> because uh, in some, 
Chaos has this. Uh, uh, so, chaos depends on the scale of observation. For instance, let's take again the logistic map near the period of the tree window. Hmm? Or near any bifurcation. You see, this is the periodic tree window. Here it is a period tree. Ta, 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 ta. Then they start bifurcating, uh, and then chaos appears again. But uh, if I go on this line here, and I observe uh, the time series, uh, hmm? I don't know if it is this, yeah, you don't see, but there is a point in the middle, ta, 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 and so on. I essentially see a period tree. Clearly, it is not regular because it is chaotic, but the essence is that uh, it is still a period tree. And because uh, my trajectory goes from here to here to here, then back to here, here, here. It does not go to exactly the same points uh, as it did before. But essentially, my system is periodic. So if you see this, uh, you don't see it is chaotic. You say, okay, this is essentially periodic uh, with noise. Actually, it is chaotic. Uh, but uh, chaos uh, on this on this scale is extremely predictable because <laughs> essentially I can say, okay, I'm, I can bet that uh, the next time uh, from here it will go here. It will never go here or any. Uh, huh? So, <clears throat> and uh, for instance, if I want to model this behavior at uh, a, a scale large enough, I would use a periodic. Uh, Representation, not really a, a chaotic or a stochastic one. So, uh, what is it? I can study this is a map, a uh, dynamical system, uh, which uh, so, uh, there is a parameter that makes that it goes from this one, which is the tenth map, which is a strongly chaotic, to this uh, map here, which has a behavior, I can show it here, that start chaotic, but after some time it start appearing a pattern like that of cellular automata. Mm -hmm. So the chaos, this is called the transient chaos. Here the system is not chaotic from the point of view of the dynamical system, but still it's impredictable because uh, this is uh, say, a very complex behavior and it is very hard to say where it will go after some time. No? So this is the, the other side of chaos. I can have unpredictable system which actually is not chaotic. No? From the point of view of uh, the, the other representation. But uh, if I look uh, to sites that are uh, not synchronized, uh, I see essentially the same. Uh, so, if I use the pinching synchronization here, I see essentially the same patterns uh, as I see in chaotic system. So, this is for saying that uh, if I measure the effort needed for pushing two systems together, I have uh, I get some result uh, both for uh, really chaotic system. Or for systems that are chaotic in the cellular automaton sense. I mean, they are actually discrete, so they cannot be chaotic, but they are really predictable. Hmm? So, for instance, these are typical cellular automaton rules. Well, in here you don't see much, but uh, they are chaotic, and if you make a perturbation, the perturbation essentially propagates a whole system. So, this is a. Huh? So clearly, from the point of view of infinitesimal perturbation, these are stable systems. But if a perturbation is large enough, it perturbs the whole system. And uh, I can use uh, the pinching synchronization also for trying to measure uh, the chaotic uh, behavior of these uh, things here. Actually, I can also do some uh, uh, analytic uh, prediction, I can use, uh, I can define a Boolean derivatives, uh, which is, uh, which could be also extended to 
take the derivative at a finite uh, increment. Instead of taking the limit, uh, no, delta x going to zero as a usual derivative, I may ask what happens if I use a finite uh, difference? Hmm? Well, in uh, some uh, cases, uh, you can get uh, some uh, uh, results that are similar to what happens in uh, using standard derivatives. For instance, uh, you can do McLaurin expansion. There is a chain rule that says, okay, the way that uh, a difference from here can go to here is the sum of this going this way, plus this going this way, plus this going both of this way, which is uh, essentially the, the expansion, the chain rule of derivatives. And uh, for instance, uh, this is the derivative of rule uh, no, 150, the, the linear rule. And you compute this. Uh, how high is the derivative of this function with respect to this variable in this configuration? Well, you move, you change this variable. So you get, uh, uh, where is it? This configuration. No? And you see if the f changes uh, when you change a variable. If it changes, you say, okay, the derivative is 1. If it doesn't change, you say the derivative is 0. Clearly, here it is a, a, a most chaotic or a most rule where all derivatives are 1s, but for instance, in other rules, you may have zeros and 1s in the derivative. For instance, here, the derivative will respect to this variable in 0 because 0, 1, 1. And 1, 1, 1 have the same result, so it doesn't, no, it's not sensitive to the variation of this variable. And so you can define a Jacobian exactly as we did for uh, standard continuous system with the standard continuous derivatives. And I skip, you can get the largest Jacobian exponents using this uh, rule. You can also make uh, an approximation which is called the random method. Because remember, in order to compute the Jacobian exponent, I have to compute the product of the Jacobian over the trajectory. Over the trajectory, no. Hmm? And the Jacobian changes with the trajectory. So it is not always the same. For this, I have to compute the the product of the Jacobian. But a, a classical approximation is that to say, okay, instead of computing really the Jacobian for each step, I take the structure of the Jacobian, for instance, it is, uh, oh, it is a three diagonal, or maybe it can be just two diagonals and so on. Or in any diagonal, I can have a certain number of uh, ones, a uh, certain probability of having one, a certain probability of having zero. For instance, for this, the Jacobian is, is always the diagonal with all ones. But for this, uh, it is the diagonal with a certain percentage of ones, and not uh, all ones. Now, it is a fraction of ones uh, in, on this line it gives you the, how many ones are in the three diagonal of the Jacobian. And so I can say, OK, instead of using real Jacobians, I can use a random Jacobians no? extracted, keeping the percentage of ones on the three diagonal uh, fixed. And with this, I can do a computation by hand. And uh, I can uh, get, uh, for instance, uh, this curve here which is the Lyapunov exponent as a function of the number of ones on the three diagonals if the, the matrix are random. Mm. Then I compute what happens to chaotic cellular automata, and I see that the cellular automata are not so different from what the random matrix approximation says. As you see, there, some of them are different, and most of them are on the curve. No? And uh, I can, uh, that is clearly here, 
the problem, so this, this is very similar to a phase transition or uh, to a bifurcation. So clearly, here I have the, the largest error. In particular, I don't have an I don't have any rule, at least for uh, cellular automata in the range equal to six, like up to six, which is uh, here. So, and, but here, for instance, I have a lot of rules. This is for an elementary cellular automata, so R equal to three. And, uh, okay, so in any case, the random matrix approximation is not so bad. And, uh, Actually, if I compute now the relation, the experimental relation between what, uh, uh, what is the lacunar quality computed uh, using uh, Boolean derivatives and the critical value of the pinching synchronization, I get this uh, plot for different rules, uh, which is not very, very good. But uh, actually, this is the random matrix approximation. This. And they are not so far from the random set. Neither they are so good, but actually there is a, a kind of so I, I don't have anything here, I don't have anything here. So at least I can say, okay, when the Lyapunov exponent computed using Boolean derivatives is large, there is in general it means a large effort to synchronize the system. When it is small, relatively small, I have less effort in synchronizing the system. Now, essentially one aspect of control is, okay, I have done this using a random points, and now I may ask, can I choose, it is actually more than cause observability, okay, how can I choose in the optimal way the points where I synchronize my system, or where I observe the system in order to have a simulated one, stay close to the observer one, uh, in a way better than just uh, choosing at random uh, some points. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, what I've done is to okay, use uh, three heuristic rules. Uh, yeah, I don't have, I haven't solved the problem. <laughs> I, I tried with some heuristics. One, okay, this is the, say, the zero case. Just a pick at random sites and synchronize them. This is, uh, say, okay, maybe it is better to synchronize where I have the largest number of first order derivatives different from zero, because where I have more chaos. And this is uh, the opposite. I synchronize uh, the system where I have the, less, the least the number of first order derivatives equal to 1. So where, where there is a less chaos, less chaos originated. Clearly, I avoid the where the sum is 0 because where the sum is 0 is synchronized by itself, so I don't need to put any effort there. Now, for the, for the the rule that have all derivatives equal to one, clearly I have no difference because all derivatives <laughs> are always one, so there are no places where I have less derivatives than others. And so clearly the three methods give us essentially synchronization for the same number of points. But for other rules, I have the study not expected the result that if I choose the points where I have less chaos, or less uh, number of uh, diverging trajectories, I get a, a faster synchronization than uh, the case where I blindly choose uh, sites at random, or even less, or even better than when I choose uh, the number that uh, have more paths. So essentially what I'm going doing here is to take the cluster where chaos can spread. In one case I put things at, at, at random and, and I'm trying to cut this string. In the other case I choose no, 
the, the points where I have the largest number of derivatives, so these uh, where I have a lot of uh, links. <laughs> In the other case, I choose the sites where I have the least number of links, so where they, I have just, say, one uh, links uh, or two. So this one I have just one link, so this one has just one link, and so on. Okay, so in the first case I am put, taking things at random. In the second case I, I prefer to choose a sites in the middle of this cluster. In the other case I am trying to choose a, things that are the boundary of the cluster. And the aim is to have the cluster disappear. And uh, so why things behave in this way? Eh? These are two different views. Eh? Because essentially the fact is that here, things remember, I don't have a real chaotic system. I have a system which is discrete, a finite number of states. So the system may synchronize just because I have two states. So it may synchronize by, them, by itself. <coughs> and the idea is that. Uh, if I avoid the propagation of chaos and I leave chaos evolved by, by itself inside a, a small strip, mm -hmm. then by chance it can synchronize by itself. Mm -hmm. Why it is absolutely useless to try to synchronize the chaos hitting in the middle because it starts propagating so every time that I am able to find a window of, of sites synchronized, they, they are then invaded by other sites from the boundary. So the idea is that in system, which in this case are, have a finite number of states, it's much better to try to avoid things to spread and leave things evolve inside, instead of trying to Synchronize uh, things uh, inside, uh, letting uh, chaos propagate to the system. Hmm. So this is a, in this graph, uh, I started from the same initial configuration. <laughs> I use the same random numbers, but uh, here I, I put a control at random. Here I, I choose to put a control where there is a, the highest uh, um, number of sites or derivatives, so essentially where it is more yellow. And here, essentially, I choose to control the boundaries, so to keep things from spreading. So you see, for instance, here I have a, a patch here that spreads. Actually, it spreads more here than here, because here I'm hitting in the middle. You see that there are holes that are not present here. But things that keep spreading uh, away from. While here, I left uh, things uh, essentially go by themselves in the inside, and I just uh, try to avoid the spreading, and then finally the system synchronizes uh, essentially by itself. And, uh, okay, so now the idea that we are exploring uh, in these uh, days, is the, the following. Suppose I have uh, the, a system and I have uh, so, a fluid system, right? Where I have some pollutant uh, can diffuse, it may react, and so on. I have uh, my, disp my disposal a certain number of robots that have probes, and I put them into the system. They can measure the concentration of the things. And I have a, they can transmit this information to my computer. In my computer, I have a simulation of the system. And so I, I think I know the fundamental laws of the system, but I want that my simulation be synchronized with the, the one in the container, maybe because I have some zone which is inaccessible to my robots, and I would like to know what is going to happen there. Since I cannot directly measure this, I say, okay, I simulate the system. I synchronize the system with the reality. If I'm pretty sure that the two things are similar, I can use my computer to measure things that I cannot measure in the reality. Hmm? So the first step is try to, to synchronize my computer simulation 
with uh, what happens in the reality. And I have at my disposal, so this is time, but my, I, this I can show you live uh, in a moment. I have at my disposal a set a number of, uh, uh, of robots or workers, and they can, may stay where I put or move. And uh, one question is, uh, what, which is the best rule that I can tell my robot to follow in order to have a faster synchronization? Should, I, should they just stay there? They should move uh, at random or with some rule and so on. So in this case, I put them at random. You see that clearly, if they are near enough, they synchronize the uh, system. So where it is blue and red, it is not synchronized. The other colors, the two systems are synchronized. So if they are near enough, uh, they synchronize. So here they are already synchronized. Here two, here two. Here, for instance, is the synchronization moment. You see that they are they stay not synchronized at this time, and then suddenly they synchronize. And clearly, they do not move, and the system uh, can stay synchronized. Here you see. It had almost synchronized and then uh, chaos on the difference uh, spread again, and so it was not so it was almost synchronized here, but then uh, chaos, uh, so okay, difference spread again. And uh, I may have uh, my workers perform uh, random works, hmm? And so it may happen, uh, for instance, it may happen that they increase uh, the synchronized state, but it may happen also that uh, uh, when they jump, uh, chaos uh, invades the, uh, the zone. You can see here, no? it, this was synchronized here. This jumps here and causes uh, uh, not profit uh, of this jump to enter in the system. So this is not exactly. Uh, the right strategy. Maybe I had to jump uh, in, a, in a different uh, way. Or uh, <clears throat> I may jump at random from here to there. And this is essentially the same as pinching synchronization. Because in pinching synchronization, I choose at random a fraction of sight, which is exactly the same as say that my robots jump at random from uh, site to site. And clearly, in this case, uh, I may have uh, as a in the previous case, large patches uh, of synchronized state uh, appearing uh, just by chance. Or uh, I may say, okay, for instance, in this case I say, if you are in a already synchronized zone, move. If you are at the boundary, stay. Hmm? So for instance, uh, this uh, stays here because he knows that he is at the boundary. So it has to stay there in order to prevent chaos to reinvade uh, the zone. Why this uh, that uh, knows that he has a he is in a synchronized uh, zone start wandering and may go to help the others. No, you see this uh, stays here. No, and then uh, as the front uh, no shrink, it start moving. It moves at random, eh? <coughs> But uh, it may say, shrink the synchronized zone, like here. You see, no? this uh, stays here, then say, okay, it's synchronized, ah, and then profits to, mm -hmm. to shrink uh, the, the non synchronized zone. And uh, for instance, this is a very effective way of programming my robots in order to achieve the synchronization. Okay, I can also say, okay, go where. Synchronization of course, but uh, since while this is uh, quite easy in one dimension, in two dimensions things are much uh, less uh, easy because uh, <clears throat> in two dimension, uh, let me see. This is uh, okay. Uh, I can try to increase the size of my system. Hmm? Okay, so this is a, a, another 
other system, uh, let me increase the number of, uh, say, 80 by 80. But I have to reduce uh, the size <coughs> to, say, 8. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. if, if, if I have this one in the middle, I don't know how to remove it. So let me try to decrease the sides. Oof. Maybe it is already open the below. Mm. Yes, the interface is not exactly easy, but okay. Uh, okay, let me show just the system. This system follows a, a coarsening dynamics, so essentially it is a cellular automaton. In this case, it is a deterministic cellular automaton that keeps going until either reaches a, a uniform state. Mm -hmm. with some defect like this, or uh, forms uh, stripes. I don't know if... Uh, yes. Let me, no, in this case it goes to a, an uniform uh, state. Uh, in this case probably it forms uh, two stripes. Uh, yes. It is periodic, eh? so it is essentially there is a, a black stripe and a blue stripe with some defect there. No? And uh, now I can uh, use a two system. Eh? I, I don't put any sim, any, any logo. Eh? So when I have two system, uh, I may have, uh, say, here it's synchronization by coincidence because both of them goes into the same uh, attractor. But in general, I have at least uh, some defect which is not synchronized. And I may ha also have a very, very different uh, situation because essentially it has a lot of uh, different uh, states. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. This goes to a, a normal synchronized state because uh, both uh, two replicas go to the black state. While uh, in other cases, uh, they may form a very. They may go to different states. Okay? So now I can put uh, some. Uh, uh, some robots there. In this case, they are still, the robots are these uh, stars here. So you see that uh, where the stars uh, are, the system is synchronized, uh, because the, the, the robots keep, keep keeping data and transferring to the other one. But, uh, okay, in this case, by chance, they go to the almost synchronized state. Clearly, they cannot synchronize these points because uh, there are no, no robots there. Mm -hmm. So, my, in other cases, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you see, they have a lot of difficulties. Uh, so, I, I, clearly, if I increase uh, the number of, uh, of robots, uh, uh, I can uh, say to the, pro to the system, uh, Generate a new robot uh, at a certain rate. Uh, clearly, by generating uh, enough uh, robots, uh, at the end uh, you see that uh, they are appearing more and more robots. Uh, and then some of them will hit uh, 
they don't synchronize the this is the clear. The end uh, it is a it goes uh, synchronized, but this is not a very good strategy. Or uh, I can I can say okay, robot just move at random, which is already more effective than having uh, standing uh, robots. Or I may try to explore what happens if I say, okay, stay if synchronized and move. Uh, no, stay if not synchronized and move if synchronized, which is uh, this one. And in this case, uh, you see that, uh, for instance, here one, two, now have reached the boundary of a non synchronized state, uh, three, and so at the end, so uh, they will. Uh, Synchronized because they stop if they are in a synchronized state. Okay, they synchronize, so they start moving away again. And so we can play with uh, with this problem, and with, which is uh, what we are going to, to do. And uh, <laughs> I think that we can stop here.